Today at Retro For You, we're diving into retro goodness with this box Commodore 64. Now it's sold as spares and repairs, I've no idea where it works, I've not tested it, it'll be live on this video. So we're going to go through it, we're going to have a look at it, we're going to check the notorious power supply, the brick of death, any issues that we come along, we're going to fix hopefully. If we do get it working, we're we'll having another look at the multi cart we built the other week thanks to PCB Way. And on that note, let's crack on! <laughs> Hello everyone, Neil here from retro for you Today we're checking out this true icon of retro computers, the Commodore 64. Now, I know I have one there on the shelf behind me, sorry, behind me there. And, but this is different, isn't it? It's boxed. I've never owned a boxed Commodore 64 in my life and I saw this come up on the bay and I thought, let's have a go at bidding for this. And I won. Now, I did get some other things with this for a sample this little box here and if I open this up it's full of a variety of games which you can see here we've got Zulu, Outback, Widow's Revenge, Monkey Magic, Danger Mouse, some power packs etc now don't know anything about these games I don't think I've ever played any of them I think I played Monkey Magic but that's about it and maybe Danger Mouse so I'll maybe check those out on another video later also, a couple of joysticks. Now we've got this one here, which is a famous Quick Shot 2, or Spectra video, it's good. Looks like it's a copy of the Quick Shot 2. Now it's not Michael Switched. Bit naff, that one. We've got this one, which is a Delta 2000. Now I've never seen one of these before, so it's a bit of an oddball, but listen. It's Michael Switched. Don't you just love that clickiness? Every button's Michael Switched, even the directions, so. I'm going to look forward to trying this because this looks quite cool actually and I love the shape of it. Let's just have a look over the box. It's not in bad condition at all. I mean there's a couple of rips etc on the corners but you expect that. I mean this is from the 1980s. So other than that it's quite a clean box. So you got all the families here all happy. You got the teacher here showing them some mathematics. You got the woman here that was doing some accounts etc. But what does get me about all these pictures here, none of them have actually got the power plugged in. So they're getting an image somehow and I don't know how. This one's got no leads, no power. This one either. This one has got a power. He's got his connected to his oscilloscope. And this one here, obviously, is it must be a bank manager or something. And he's got nothing plugged in. So they must have had wireless technology in them days. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, Let's crack on with getting this open. Just like Christmas in the 1980s, we're going to open this up. Sighting times, eh? So we're just going to slide this out of the box carefully. Put that to one side down there, safe. Now we do have. The Commodore logo. Now this isn't broken, which is amazing. Are you ready for this? Let's take it off. And there you go, Commodore 64 with the brick of death. Well, hopefully it's not a brick of death. So overall, it doesn't look too bad at the moment, and there's a lot of dust on there, dirty keys, etc. But you expect that, don't you? So we're just going to get that off. It's gone rather yellowy. There's a warranty sticker there that's been broken, and it's from a Dingwall Computers. It says, do not remove. Oh dear. Looks like somebody's broken it. And of course, we have a power supply here. <clears throat> and a system 64738. I guess that was a repair sticker. So maybe it is broken. So let's just see. Let's just listen to some music and have a closer look at this Commodore 64.
So as you can see, it doesn't look too bad at all. It looks it quite in good shape. But the main thing we need to focus on first is this here, the brick of death. This is what we're going to be looking at first, the Commodore 64 power supply. Now, we do want to take a look inside this plug only because it's the old fashioned plug and I want to check that it's wired correctly inside because that doesn't look too good there. So first things first, let's get this undone. What's good is it's got a 3 amp fuse in it so that is a good thing but what isn't good is the way these wires have been clamped here in this clamp it should be this main wire clamp so I'm just going to undo that and correct that now I'm happy with that for now. Like I say before, I'm going to order a new plug and get rid of that anyway. And the next thing we need to do is test the output of this power supply. Now what happens is there's an internal voltage regulator that regulates the 5 volt. And that fails and all of a sudden it's outputting a lot more voltage than it should. Now 8-bit Retro Refix had one the other week they purchased from a computer show. And that was outputting 21 volt. So of course... 21 volt through a 5 volt chipset is not good. It causes all your chips to just go boom, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this 5 volt output. So I'm just going to clamp this in a holder. And the pins I need to test are the bottom two here. You can see. I'm just going to plug this power supply in. Turn it on. Nothing's gone bang. It's set to 20 volt here. Now, these are a bit tricky to measure because things move. So I'm gonna do this as good as I can. So we've got the positive air and the negative air. There you go, we've got five point, we had it then, didn't we? 5.38 volt, now it's not fluctuating so I think that's okay to use. We're going to try that anyway. It's very difficult holding these cables on and holding the cable and the connector at the same time. But you can see that was in the okay range. It wasn't 6 volt. It was a lower half of 5.5 volt. We'll get ready to test that next. We're going to plug that into the Commodore 64, connect it to the video grabber and see if we get an image. So, I've got this all plugged up. I've got the Ghostbusters cartridge plugged in, which 8-Bit Retro Refix donated to me. Great thanks for that, because it's good, because it's got good music on it, etc. So, we're about to turn this on and see what happens. Now, already, I can hear quite a scary sizzle and whine from this here power supply. Now, I'm sure this should have music on here. Now, it doesn't seem to be playing because I can't see the VU bars moving. So, I think there's something wrong here. This power supply, I'm just going to bin off out of the way in a minute. Because, I don't know if you can hear that on video. It's sort of like going zzzz. So, I don't like that. So, I'm going to grab my old Commodore 64 power supply I got from behind. So, we're just going to press space. We'll just load it in now while we can. And of course now we should get some music in a minute. Let's see if it even loads. It doesn't look as if it wants to load. So let's just give that one last go. So we have got some problems with Commodore 64. By sound of it, we haven't got any sound. And it doesn't seem to want to load a game. Whether that's to do with this power supply, I don't know. Now, again, we've got a white screen. So, we're going to strip this apart 
and have a look at it and see what we can sort out. So just to rule out this cartridge here, which I think should be fine, it used to work before, okay. We're just going to turn this on as well and test it with the cartridge we made the other day, the Sidekick 64. Now I've changed the power supply to my power supply because I trust it more. Now that's booted straight away with the Sidekick. So we're just going to load Monty on the run. That's come up fine. You can see the logo there now. I've managed to get the logos working on the actual screen. And that's actually loaded, so that's good. But again, we've got no sound. So we just need to sort that out. Maybe it's a bit of a dirty cartridge down there, cartridge slot. So let's get it apart and look inside. Now the good thing is, it's got all its clips at the back, which is absolutely amazing. This is better than the other one. So we removed the top half, and you can immediately see there's a lot of dust bunnies in there. There's a big one there, did you see it? Look at that. So <laughs> we're going to give this a good clean out. We're going to remove this SID chip here, and replace it with a SID chip I've got in the other Commodore 64 and just see if that works. So let's just give that a quick brush off now while we're here. So the sit in this is a 6581. We're just gonna get the chip puller what I've noticed is this is one of those really crappy sockets. Let's just pop this other SID chip in and hopefully it'll work. Just so need to make sure the legs are lined up and just push that in. Next, we'll just get that connected back up. Let's give it time to start up. No, no sound again. So something is definitely wrong. So next we're going to take the board out and have a look underneath at the actual socket. We're just going to whip this board out and have a look. So it's as easy as that basically just undo the screws and now we're going to look underneath and although there is some signs don't know what that is that's just the other end of the thingy of repair it doesn't look too bad there's no signs of spillage underneath this socket here which is a SID chip I mean it all looks good you can see there doesn't seem to be any issue at all with those pins there so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to desolder this socket and just replace it with a new one because I never trust those single swipe sockets. We're just going to desolder this socket. So listen to some music while we crack on with this. So looking under the microscope, it all looks good. There's no broken contacts there. You can see. Let's just go across to the other side. I think that one is okay. Let me just get my knife and give that a bit of a scrape.
yeah, that would be fine. It's just a bit of the wire broken there, but you can see the solder will spread around there anyway. So, that's not going to stop it from working, is it? But you can see the socket literally fell apart in my hands. So, that looks good. Going to give that a quick blitz off with some IVA. And a bit of a toothbrush. Before we put this new socket in here. So hopefully we can just slot this socket into place. Just like so. We'll just check that there's no bent legs, which I don't think there is. And we'll just put some Smurf poo on this to hold it in place at each end. And we will insert the original chip that we got here. Make sure it's the right way around. Now, that's clicked in nicely. I am wearing a ESD band, so don't worry, guys. Here we go. Moment of truth. Let's power it on and see if it works or not. Give that a chance to load. There you go, we'll tab on down to Monty on the run, I've gone the wrong way, go back up, press enter, press space. Now I can see the VU bars moving so it's definitely working, jobs are good. And so just while I've got you all here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to solder a wire on bottom of the SID chip on pin 8. Now this will connect to that cartridge down here. And that will allow it to hopefully emulate the eight SIDs so we can play the tuneful eight demo which uses eight SIDs to make some really cool music. So while well, I've got it in pieces, I might as well add that wire. So without further ado, let's crack on. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna count down eight from here. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight so it should be that pin here which to me looks like it goes around to that pad there which is true we're just going to take it off that via there let me just check that with continuity which it does so i can just take it off that pad there which is easy in it so we'll just solder a wire onto that as easy as that So that has got that lovely, it looks good, we're just going to drag that out the back somewhere now, as long as it reaches this port here, which it does. So I'm just checking the continuity from pin 8 here to this here, as you can see it's good, it hasn't got any continuity either side, just that one pin. So that should all be well, let's connect it up. And give it a go now hopefully we're ready to try this tuneful eight now the lead is connected now we'll turn it on we'll wait for it to load let's wait for it to load up right okay so what i need to do now is you notice now the sid isn't grayed out which it was before so we go to settings and i can set this to eight sids i think it was on so so i'm trying to look on the little screen here eight six there you go so we'll change it to that is that eight times eight five eight oh so it's eight times eight five hours we'll press s to save settings it should save it's all looking good up to now we'll press is it f5 to go back 
we we'll enable the SIDS, which is there. Is that enabled? Do we have to press it again? No, we don't. I was pressing F5 when I F3 enables the SIDS. You can see there now that actually says eight times SIDS enabled. Now, I think what we need to do is we press reset to go back to the menu. Okay. Now we need to go down, sorry, up to here, the ultimate. And it's come up with eight SIDs, which is good. Hopefully it will load the demo and play the music. Now there's no output at all at the moment, so maybe it isn't working. Yeah, that is outputting something, but it doesn't sound correct at all. Does anybody know how to get this working? Because that's not working at all. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe this cartridge <coughs> still has some problems that I don't know about. So maybe next time we'll look at that a bit more and try to get this working because I do want to do another video on this cartridge. But for now we've got another Commodore 64 that seems to be working a lot better and it just needs a good clean etc. So in the week I'll get that cleaned up and we'll see how that goes. Apologies for the awful music in the background, it shouldn't really sound like that. So join me next on the outro. Thanks all for watching. So if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button. Also, comment down below, even if it's hello. Now, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, then please do. Subscribers are coming out all the while. Now, speaking of subscribers, I now have a membership which costs 99p a month, yes, 99 pence. Now, those 99 pences will go all together to buy me a bag of Harry Bows. So that'll make me extremely happy. I now have one paying member. His name will come up on the screen, so a big thanks to him. He is now helping keep me in Harry Bowles. So next week we are going to carry on with the Archimedes, I think. It's either the Archimedes or Macintosh. It depends what I get round to. Now I do plan to build a mouse adapter for the Archimedes and I do plan to install a compact flash card and get that installed as well so you can see some software running on the actual machine. I have finished restoring it and cleaning it up and it looks a lot better. I'll maybe put a post up in my community tab later so you can see a picture of it. And just while I've got you all here, please check out the links down below for the other YouTubers in the Retro group. We've got 8-Bit Retro Refix, Captain Commodore, Joseph Retro Bits, to name but a few. They're so good. They do great things. And don't forget to pop along to Discord as well, which is down below. You can come along, say hello to us all. I'm in there, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Captain Commodore. There's a load of us in there. So that's about it for now. I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.